At this time, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the comprehensive plan stakeholder meeting. Uh, Mr. Dillon, at this time, I'll turn the meeting over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Commissioners. Again, this is the comprehensive plan update the process that we started back in February of this year. And we have we draw to a conclusion on updating the plan as required every five years. Uh, we want to have a stakeholder meeting again. And again, we want to have a stakeholder meeting with interested parties to talk about the land use. Uh, the comprehensive plan itself covers about seven different elements, ranging from community goals, needs and opportunities, community work programs. But the main one we're here tonight is to talk about land use patterns and the future of growth in Lowndes County. Again, you can see those elements here. So the draft plan we have presented tonight, uh, copies were available, it's also available it's online on our website and the Regional Commission website, uh, is given essentially a 90% complete rough draft and it will be adopted later on this year. But here's the move forward. When we talk about the comprehensive plan, we also have to talk about the ULDC, which is our local ordinances, and how we fulfill the comprehensive plan. Uh, this is straight out of our local ordinance of the ULDC. Um, and again, when we talk in reference to those character areas, you can see here that it is guidance. It is for commissioners like you to consider as you move forward with any rezoning request for the future of Lyons County. So that last line there, uh, as the plan in general, these character descriptions and goals should not be considered final. As we gain a greater understanding of the role and value they play, their descriptions should be fine-tuned. So that's kind of why we're here tonight. Again, the conference plan eliminates the entire county by character area. Uh, I know this map is really hard to see it. A little bit later on, we're going to get into some of those finer-tuned areas. Each of the character areas is broken down with its unique description, stating those goals, the development strategy, the list of permitted zonings, and as required by the state quality community objectives. So tonight we're here to discuss those for particularly agricultural areas, as you see here, some of the descriptions and the goals there, the rural residential areas on the next slide here, and again moving forward into some of the suburban areas and how we continue to look at the county's growth. We've got insets from the map here as well. Before we jump into these, I do want to recognize Ms. Elizabeth Back of the Southern Georgia Regional Commission. She's been facilitating, uh, providing a comprehensive plan, and has been a good resource, as well as Mr. Matt Martin, representing the cities of Hayhira and Valdosta, as far as planning for the future. They are here tonight just again as a reference, um, provide their wisdom and experience as well. So with that, I turn back over to you as just the next few slides are just particular insets uh, of North, North portion of Lyons County. <coughs> All right, um, I guess we can move then if uh, you complete your presentation then. Dylan. Yes, sir. Again, we have available slides and insets. Of gotcha. Particular okay. Items. All right, we'll open it up now for public comment. Uh, we have, I believe, five speakers that have signed up to speak. Uh, we'll call them in the order that I have them here. Our first speaker is Kathy McMillan Atkins.
First and foremost, I want to thank all of y'all for your service to our community. In preparing these maps, I am amazed by the number of subdivisions going up on Valdell Road. Clydestone Road all the way to Highway 41. The destruction of our rural lands is very disturbing. I have not spoken to anyone who is in favor of the tidal wave of these subdivisions and the rezoning of our rural residential areas to suburban, with the exception of one person who was in favor. The impacts of these massive develops are not yet known in many, many aspects. Most everyone repeated the same thing, and that was if we had wanted to live in a suburb, we would have built or moved to the suburb. When these agricultural areas are gone and farmers are no more growing our crops, where is our food and our clothing going to come from? Concerning the water pipe planning to be run up to Macmillan Road from Lucas Richardson Road, the only advantage this will serve is to the investors and the developers. For the 64-acre tract that was with, recently withdrawn on Valdale and Bethany Drive, this will cost $550,000 in splosh monies that has been paid for by the Lowndes County taxpayers. This is a waste of taxpayers' money. This will only benefit the developers. So if you are expect, expecting a return on your investment, you are going to be very disappointed. There isn't anyone on Macmillan Road willing to sell their land. Not anyone. This land has been in my family for seven generations. The land on Valdale and Parker Place has been in my family for seven generations. I'm talking my mother, and my father. So, in the future, if you're planning on running water and sewage lines down Macmillan Road, you will have to go several miles down Macmillan Road to find anyone to sell to developers and investors. In collecting these signatures for our petitions, I have listened to everyone's concerns as evidenced by my neighbors who are able to attend the meeting tonight who sit behind me. We have collected over 1,000 signatures. There's our map. We have petition signed. We have evidence. We respectfully ask that you honor our heritage, our decades-long hard working of our lands, and keep the 2016 comprehensive plan zoning plan in place, allowing for two and a half acre lots only. I respectfully ask for common sense to be used in this vote, not financial gain. And I thank you for your time. Okay. Any questions? I have any questions. Thank you very much. Okay, I'll leave it it's up here for Mr. Paulson. Okay. All right, then our next speaker is uh, Mr. Brad Folsom. If you would please come forward again, state your name and the address for the record. I'm Brad Folsom, 2611 North Patterson. That's my business address. <laughs> I live in Stone Creek also, I'll ask to Georgia. Uh, thank you all very much for having this meeting. Uh, I appreciate you sort of going back in the process a bit before. Um, however, I, you know, we're at somewhat of a disadvantage, I think, because we don't really know what's being proposed or even thought of by the commission. Um, we have the, the, as Jenny mentioned, the draft of the comprehensive plan, but that draft doesn't contain any maps, changes to the category, anything. So somewhat of what I'm saying tonight is a little bit based on supposition and, and word of mouth, which are not good things for the commission, the county, or the residents. So I would encourage you all to put out there, either tonight or soon, what it is you're thinking of so that it can be addressed as well. Uh, but I'm here representing a group of concerned home and landowners, most of which 
you'll see on this map, and I want to miss out to leave this up here because this map shows you just how pervasive the sentiment is about this issue in North Lowndes County. And these are, not that you need reminding, but these are about a thousand residents in that area. And most of the land mass in that area are represented on this map. And, uh, you know, I don't think any of the folks in the group I represent um, want to necessarily be no, never, and not in my backyard kind of folks. Uh, they want to come to the table, they want to get something that will work for everybody. But they also, at a premium, want to protect the lifestyle that has been guaranteed them by the things that this commission has done in the past, maybe before some of you were on here or, or whatever. Uh, but, but they want well, they want that protection. You know, as Ms. Allen mentioned, 900 folks signed the petition when we were here for the Bethany re re rezoning that was withdrawn. Since then, another 100, 150 or so have added their names to that. And basically that petition, the wording, we handed it up at that time, but the wording says that they would like to maintain the rural residential character area of this uh, particular area. I want to talk a little bit about the things we know, the things we can all agree on. First of all, between North Valdosta Road and Lucas Richardson Road, up out there, there's approximately 750 lots as we sit today by Mr. Dillard's count that are ready for development. Um, they're already developed, I should say, ready for sale and ready for building. Um, that's vacant land. Uh, there's also several tracts of land that owners who NACCO, uh, the Dasher Oil Corporation, all those groups have their land for sale ready for development as well. This is all south of Lucas Richardson Road, which is where, as you know, the county of water and sewer uh, ends at this point. Um, the one key thing that we've talked about a good bit is, you know, the Valdell Road capacity, as you may know, is 6,000 cars per day. In 2019, it was at 49.50. You all know, if you have been down Valdell Road, how many houses have been built since then, how many additional cars are coming down that road. I would venture to say uh, that we're pretty dang close to the 6,000 cars per day now. And this will only, any changes to that will only add to that issue, and, and as we've been told, any changes to Valdell Road are in the 2026 area, five years from now. So that's a long time for folks in that area to deal with possible issues that are already present. You know, I came down to Valdell the other morning just as a, as a sort of test run at 7.30 in the morning, and I sat at that red light through three changes of the red light on North Valdosta Road to turn left. That's a onerous burden on somebody living out there. I don't know if any of you live on that road. I don't, I don't think you do. But you ought to go down and come through that way. That's not, a, that's not a good thing for a resident. Um, you know, this chart shows um, very clearly that folks are against this type of small lot development. Uh, and one of the other things we did uh, just today was we took an area from Union Road on the west to the river on the east, bounded by Lucas Richardson on the south, basically the existing uh, rural residential care area. By Thompson, um, Bethany, McMillan. That ain't good enough. I think it's eye opening to know that that area encompasses 6,250 acres approximately. And, and again, we're going on supposition because what we've heard is if you're thinking about increasing the suburban care area up to McMillan and up to Bethany, right? So you're, you're, you're increasing that area almost 6,300 acres. That's a lot of land to be developed that there hasn't really been shown to be anybody in favor of that live in that area now. And this encompasses right at 80 to 85 percent of the land area the people that signed this petition. And I know in a perfect world, all of you, I've said this to many of you, you know, we would encourage density closer to urban areas. That's the ideal um, decision here. And I think it's left up to you, um, you know, I've this ever since I was on the Planning Commission, before we had the meltdown in 2008, our banking community did a lot of, of, of this for us. You know, they determined where development ought to go by the loans they paid for. I know for a fact doing this type of work with banking banks these days that a lot of those banks are more focused on the amount of business they write rather than making these decisions. That leaves this decision to local government. It lands squarely in your lap, the planning commission lap. And I want you to take that as very important. Um, you know, I, I, I think we would all suggest and encourage smart development in our community. And 
not let development be driven simply by what you know, non-resident or, or non-local, in some cases, uh, developers and others want to do. That's not that's not the pattern for that's not the pattern for economic growth. The pattern for economic growth is protecting and densifying near urban areas, not moving into rural carrier areas. Um, I'll end by this. We, as I said, we're not here to say no, never, or not in my backyard, as you may have heard. But I want you to consider a few things that I don't know if they consider. I've, I've said this, some of you have said it to JD a couple times. But you know, there, there is very easily, it may take some more time, some more effort, but there is very easily created a buffer area, a new character area that would be a, a rural, suburban buffer area that might allow for different size lots, that might allow for different development standards, that could, that could shelter some of the development that's occurring south of Lucas Richardson and between you know, this area that we're thinking about expanding into. Um, I, I think you could easily do that with development standards and, and increase the development standards within the ULDC. Um, I think you ought to consider focusing water sewer expansion rather than down McMillan, as, as we've heard, you know, upstate. If you go upstate, you'll want to look at the map. I mean, that gets you closer to what I've heard is some goals to loop the system for quality, but it also gets you closer to school campuses. It also gets you closer to Moody Air Force Base and the development out of Bemis. Now, all of that plays into developments already occurring and not taking away rural areas that, that ought to be protected. Um, and as a last resort, if you find that, that this commission wants to change these character areas, then I think you very, you must look very strictly at development standards. You know, the last thing we need in this community is to turn into communities that have nothing but rooftops when you ride up to a subdivision. You, know, you have to, you have to make sure that we have some development standards that require a, a more uh, sophisticated type of development in this community and not the lowest common denominator of laying roads and utilities and low and goal. So I hope, you, I hope you'll consider that. We are happy to continue to work with the county and the commission on all of these. Happy to come to the table and try to work through some, some alternatives. But I want you to very much know that there is a large group of people, a large group of homeowners, landowners, and voters who are absolutely against what we're hearing. Thank you, and I'll be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Paul? Brad, I appreciate you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, and I, I, by the way, I'm not being defiant. I'm not wearing a mask. I told Paige I didn't bring my I didn't have any, so I'm here. I, I appreciate you, and, and I agree with most of what you said. There's things that we're just going to disagree on, and, and, and it is what it is. But I, I think the, the, the one thing that you said I'm not being defensive, but I kind of understood what you were saying was that, is that we're letting the developers drive our growth. Is that what you said? Yes. And I didn't say it our way. I said non-resident. What I meant is developers who don't live in those areas come in buying property, you know, and convincing people because they can sell their property more than for rural uses or land uses, you know, to come in and develop that everybody surrounding them does not want. So the challenge not where the developers want to be. The developers are not going to develop land. The landowners are not, let's back up, the landowners are not going to sell property that a developer can't buy, that a, that a builder can't purchase lots in, that an end user will end it. So, I mean, in my opinion, it really boils down to that's where people want to be. I mean, we, we I won't name any specific developments, but we all know of some that, that everybody seems to say we don't want any. I publicly said that that I didn't want any more R10, um, and we have to be real thoughtful about where we allow any more R10 at. Um, but really, it's it's where people want to go. So I mean, you know, this group of folks will say, and you said it a minute ago, I think you have to focus your efforts over closer to state. Well, you're gonna be right back up here with a group of folks that live on State Road and that side of Skipper Bridge and all that. If that's the case, I mean, it, it truly is a not in my backyard type situation. And, and I'm very empathetic to everybody here tonight. I mean, you know, again, I say, I, I agree with a lot of what you said, but as, as 
somebody who passionately cares about our community and doesn't want to be um, like other communities that's been discussed where they've said no we're not we're not we're not encouraging any more growth here we don't you know we don't want it stay away and some of those people are struggling here 20 years later so we don't want to be known as a group of commissioners who says you know absolutely not developers stay away from here and everything's going to stay the same we're all going to be comfortable and peaceful where we're at or we're going to be hoping to change so how do we find that balance especially when everybody wants to be from North Valdosta Road to Bethany Road. And I'm, and I'm saying that probably, of course, but left to right, all the way east to west. I mean, that's where the growth is occurring. So how do we, you know, and you said, oh, you want to respond to that, and I'll let you before I have to go. Well, no, I, I mean, I, I get that. I think the thing that lets the air out of that argument a little bit is the 1,670 acres of NAP coal that's ready for two or three hundred that the dashers on was ready for development all in that area you know that that inventory alone you develop those two tracks now, now what I'm, I'm venturing out on them here but because i don't know I don't, let me we're not the developer i understand but i'm venturing out on them here because i don't know but i would venture to say that the developers who have approached NACO and the dasher don't want to pay the prices for those but we'll pay the prices that you know the track will have to one or whatever and it's probably a lower price that's pure speculation, but yeah. what but what what that tells me is what the reason that it sort of lets the air out of that argument is that that land is plenty in that area in the exact area you're talking about for development for the next 10 years or 15 years. We already have 750 lots today that are un unbuilt. 750 between North Austin Road and Lucas Register, and add 1,600 acres development to the same to the same extent. What does that give you? Three times that, four times that. Tell me, there's going to be 2,100, 2,500, 3,000 more lot more houses built in the next 10 years in that area. I, I don't personally see it. Our population went up five, seven thousand in the census. Listen, we've all said we don't we don't know where. I would love to know where the people. And I would venture to say, and I've said this some of you. I think everybody in the room probably knows it, but I, I can also see the fact that we won't have another economic downturn in the next five years. And none of us can. Well, but you have to kind of put that in the equation. Here, here's the here's the truth that you want to look at. From starting the 1920 census, every 40 years, Lowndes County was up 80 to 90 percent of the population. So if you had a year you were 100,000, 40 years later you're going to be at 180, 190,000 people. So we just had 119,000 in the last census count. So by 2060, you're going to have about 215,000 people living in Lowndes County. Where are they going to go? Where are you going to put them? The city grew 800 people over the last 10 years. Not the city. It's going to be an unincorporated area. Property is where they're, is where they're moving to. So, of course, we know the larger the larger is there. The larger issue in this entire community has to do with is people moving out of the, in the tax base, moving out of the city of Valdosta. And I believe, even though you know, we, we all talk about getting along, we have to do something about that as the county. Agree. And we have to get the cooperation of the city to do that. This is Brad talking to the county resident. I agree. But, I, but I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying. We can't continue to multiply the county and let our urban area continue to de-densify. That's not good planning. But J.D. says it is. No, it's not. I, I don't disagree with you, but I'm looking at what the, the trends are and what is actually happening. I can say I would love everybody moving to move inside the city limits of Alaska. But that's not happening. That's not that's not what happened the last team. And years. all we're asking is for this commission to find a way to reverse the trend or at least to try to stem the tide. We are but it work. But and not you, just continue to add, add, add and take away our rural areas. But to the extent we but it's still I've mean, just I've looked at the numbers and so by twenty sixty we'll have two hundred and fifteen thousand people in Lowndes County and there's gotta be growth somewhere. I don't think they're going to grow. The city of Austin will grow. And this is just my opinion, but I don't think they're going to grow within their within their city limits now. So then, then what are you talking about? Annex and property on the other side of the bridge towards the north end, and then the same thing's going to happen then, and maybe even be more densely populated than, than than what we're talking about. So I don't know. I mean, it's been nice. I don't think there's a, nobody has a crystal ball. Well. I don't hear you, but I, I would add this to keep it in mind. 
and Ms. Atkins did a great job with her presentation and certainly was appreciated. However, she made the statement, she never intends to sell any of her property. That's there. Um, there's nobody out there, regardless of where this imaginary line ends up, there's nobody twisting anybody's arm to make them sell the acreage that they have. That's a decision that those individuals make, is that they want to market their property, whether it's a farmer that's looking for his uh, retirement strategy or whatever it may be, and then you have, on the other hand, you have a developer that recognizes the fact of where that growth is at, and he makes that investment to figure out that, you know, I'm going to gamble on this and see if I can put a development in here and, and sell these properties. We know, as you said, if the downturn turns in the market, then all of this is just not really going to matter, you know, until it makes another adjustment. But reality is, as been said, we have a responsibility uh, as well is to be able to look at this growth, patterns that we have before us that's present so that we can make the adjustments. And I say this a lot of times, we never want to get in a position to where we're, we're actually chasing development and we're chasing growth in this community. We need to try to have the foresight to have some planning in place so that if it chooses to go somewhere and in that direction, we'll be there and we'll, we'll basically be ready. So that, you know, this is very, it's a very, very tough decision that everybody's going to have to make. But again, I just don't want to everybody to understand as much as anything is that the comprehensive plan also is a tool to use. It's not anything that's etched in stone that says you do this and you do that and you don't do this. It's a tool for everybody to look at. It's a tool for the developers to look at where is their potential for growth. It also has to be you know, other investors that maybe just wants to go out there and, and make the investment in a piece of property. All of those factors play a, play a role. But at the end of the day, as we look at the comprehensive plan, we've got to be conscientious enough about the fact that currently, as it says, Lowndes County Unincorporated is growing. And as we've said, where it is growing is in the north and northwest side. And it has a lot to do with the school. I mean, I've, I've got grandchildren that's in that school system, and everybody wants to be in that school system. Now, the school themselves uh, are going to have to make some decisions from that standpoint, because again, they can't tell people not to move in to that district. So what will they do? They'll adjust the district line, they make a decision to add on or build a school. They'll do what they have to do and that's the message that I've received. But worry about the school system. The school system will do what they've got to do. But at the end of the day, as Ms. Thorne's kind of said, you know, we're faced with the challenges that folks want to live in this area. So I agree, and got it, or Ms. Thornstein touched on it. You know, we don't want to see everything in a nest. I mean, we just don't. And we've got some of that, and we want to move on away from that. Um, I agree with a lot of what's been said, but this is this is a challenge. It is something that we've got to at least take a look at about the next five years, minimum, you know, of what we're going to what we're going to be looking at. Because we've got to give everybody some direction. Everybody needs to understand where we're going to be, and that, that that responsibility does fall on us at the end of the day to make that final decision. Last thing I'd like to say to you, key in on just then is you, know, you look at this conference of planning. And quite frankly, I, I understand what you're saying about how it informs the process, but then doesn't necessarily bear on the process. But your ULDC reads a little more strongly than that. And since you look at it every five years, if you'll think about, let's think about the development pattern of Nelson Hill. Nelson Hill began being developed in around 2008, because I foreclosed on 2008. <laughs> and, and, and it was, it's got, Roughly 500 lots, if I remember right. It's taken about 10 years for that to be fully built. So that's 500 lots in 10 years. We have 750 now. You're going to look at this again in five years, right? So let's look at the same and see where we are in five years. Because you have 750 lots now, you have two or three other tracks in this area that will be developed. There's really no reason to move it beyond. If you want to put the water and sewer in, if you 
you have the capability and the money. But let's look at it. Because once the character area is changed, I can tell you, representing people that are against zoning changes, your back is against the wall. You have virtually no no say so. That's not true. Well, but that's not true. That's just the right. But that was the case. We wouldn't even need to be here. From, from a legal, legal standpoint, plaintiff's commission wouldn't even be He wouldn't even be Just go to the book, but the thing is, then. So I'm not buying it. But your duty is to follow your zoning ordinance, your ULDC, and your and your character area maps that you passed as as that's your duty as a commission. It's the law. So once you pass it, you're following the law, and it makes it incredibly hard for anybody opposing it to go in any different direction if it fits within those character areas and if it fits within the ULDC. I can tell you, if I challenge zoning, it's, it makes it incredibly hard. So I'm just saying, I think there's a good opportunity to leave it as it is for five years. You had a question, real quick. I, I, don't, I don't have anything for, for Brad, but I just had a general concern okay. once everyone's done. Um, my, my general concern um, out of all of this, um, to, to be honest with you, is uh, in looking at everything in red, uh, there, that's a lot of money that's already been committed. Uh, I stopped at $10 million roads that we're talking about putting in, the, in this area. And long story short, just by putting paved road and infrastructure in those areas is going to create traffic and what have you. Uh, we talked about um, the uh, wastewater or what have you out there. You know, this money has already been obligated prior to this process. And, and, and the problem that I'm finding is uh, under our natural, or should I say, our normal considerations for paving a road. When I when I drove those areas, I didn't see many many houses. I mean, they were they were separated. But this is a 3.7 million dollar road that's going to be paved. This is a 2.5 million dollar road that's going to be paved. Is is there any way we can take it off the list? Or, or, or by being on tier, it's already done, right? And, and so, you know, you, you're talking about the, the next five years in, in this band three, uh, no matter uh, what decision is made, you're talking about paved roads on Hall Road, Class, uh, I mean, all of those major roads. And that's going to put traffic through that whole area. And so, you know, uh, my, my concern is just about, you know, it, it, you know, I want to know if we could use the money elsewhere. If not, you know, what we're talking at the end of the day, it's going to be traffic in that area. There's going to be a, a lot of growth. You're talking about already development decisions have been made, basically, is what I'm getting at. Um, and, and I don't know if you can, you can almost turn this around yeah. because of the amount of money that's already been obligated and voted on. Well, I, I would say, uh, Mr. Marshall, that those roads that you have that's on the T's plus agenda, those roads, they're all prim primarily running east and west. Those roads are going to be utilized primarily by the folks that live in that area. I mean, they start at Valdale and go over to 41, the majority of them. And Hall Road does go on across the Union Road. But th that's going to be the roads that the citizens that live in those areas that will have a better means of moving east and west between those primary corridors in Lowndes County. Right now, some of the roads that we're talking about, Bethany Road is, is a primary example of one of those east-west corridors where folks that's over on Vildale that wants to go toward 41 or in that direction, they cut across to go over to um, 41, or they take Macmillan and go over to Venus. You know, so that's the purpose of those roads, and that's really the, the analogy behind those roads being resurfaced. Um, so, that out, I'm just saying that's that's calling for development. When you put like Hall Road, then it's really not much out there, you know. But we're going to do that road all the way across. And then when I look at uh, Coleman and the other, it's a lot of money for an area that doesn't want development. And if they don't want development, if we were to say we're not going to do development, you know, uh, but I think we the spend limit, money. I think I believe, I believe here is that the dilemma is is that as I said earlier. There's folks that, that lives in this area that will never sell their property, has no intention whatsoever, as we said, it's been family for seven generations, 
it will remain in the family for another seven generations. But then there's also some property out there that someone would prefer to sell that. There are there is some ag land that falls in that category where a farmer is looking for his retirement. I mean, he's worked hard and for his entire life on that piece of dirt trying to buy out a, a, a living and it's time he wants to retire and so he makes the decision that he wants to sell some of that property. Well, that's again, that's a decision that, that individuals make about their land, whether they want to dispose of that land and it would fall. Again, we're looking at it from a standpoint of where do the citizens of this community currently want to live? And I think the evidence is showing every single time you look at it, again, it's in that northwest corner. Um, we can't put a gate up there and say oh, nobody else in here because this is where they want to be. And so I do agree that our challenge is what we are obligated to do is to find the very best way to make that work for everybody. And again, what we're seeing here is not something that's in concrete. It's not, but it's something that we have to consider. It's a starting point, and I believe that we can get where we need to be, that we can address our concerns and this community's issues for the next five years. And then, at the end of those five years, we'll look at it again as we're required to see what else we need to do if we need to do it. And I think that's where we're in the discussion with this. So, anything else, Commissioners? Do I call up the next speaker?